While the first MCU movie we ever got the chance to see was Iron Man back in 2008, the reality is that the Marvel Universe stretches far back beyond that time. We're talking all the way back when the very fabric of the universe was still being created. Because that's the origin of the Grandmaster. You may remember seeing him during Thor Ragnarok, but there's a lot more to end we gassed than meets the eye. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is the best, right? The movie Thor Ragnarok stood out in many ways, and nearly all of them were just plain awesome. The stakes involving Asgard had never been higher. We finally got a female villain in the MCU, and none other than Jeff Goldblum was making an appearance. Many fans wouldn't dare question the great Mr. Goldblum, or the Grandmaster for that matter, but comic book fans had just one question. Why isn't the Grandmaster blue? Oh no, you can't ask people why they're not blue, we know. But there's an actual explanation. You see, in the comic books, the Grandmaster has a very distinctive blue hue. Yet the movie version saw on the big screen looks totally different. It turns out this was much more than a merely stylistic change. Modern day movie magic has come leaps and bounds from where it once was, and the special effects of Ragnarok were certainly impressive. They even managed to make a pile of rocks look lively and animated. Uh, oh wait, that's our friend Korg! And it's not like it would have taken anything special besides a ton of blue paint in order to transform Goldblum into the blue Grandmaster we were so used to seeing on the pages of Marvel Comics. According to Ragnarok director Taika Waititi, he didn't want anything to distract from Goldblum's masterful performance and thought that making the Grandmaster blue might remind the audience of one of his many other parts. In the cult classic movie Earth Girls Are Easy, just Google it. Goldblum plays a vibrantly colored alien, along with his fellow actors Jim Carrey and Damon Wayans. His alien character was covered in blue makeup and blue fur. And why TD didn't want to make Goldblum play yet another blue alien, nor did he want audiences to confuse Ragnarok with Earth Girls Are Easy. That probably wouldn't have been a problem. Plus, although it may look easy to apply, these massive makeup jobs can take an incredibly long time, and the removal is unbelievably hard on the actor's skin. We don't blame YTD for not wanting to put one of his stars through all this, and it also fits with his directing style. If you're a Marvel movie fan, you probably noticed that Ragnarok had a very different feel than the previous movies in the franchise, Thor and Thor The Dark World. The cast and crew all credit YTD for this and claim he encouraged improvisation and for each actor to bring their own thoughts, feelings, and ideas to their character. According to Jeff Goldblum, YTD instructed him to improvise and make the character his own, and that's just what he tried to do. When asked to describe his version of the Grandmaster, Goldblum described him as a hedonist, a pleasure seeker, an enjoyer of life and tastes and smells. So now you know why the Ragnarok version of the Grandmaster just has some tasteful blue eyeliner and markings instead of being entirely blue. Now let's talk about who the Grandmaster really is, how he got that cool title, and which of the existing Marvel characters is his BFF. Well, we can't tell you exactly how he came into being because nobody knows. In the comic books, we learn that Endwee Gast is one of the elders of the universe, and these beings are unimaginably old. They came into being around the time of the Big Bang, and they've been around for so long that nobody is quite sure how exactly they came into being. And we guessed, and the other elders of the universe are more or less immortal, and have seen races and galaxies come and go in their lifetimes. We've seen another one of the elders in the MCU before, who's named Tanalir Tavon. Although you probably know him better as the Collector, both the Collector and the Grandmaster have been around for so long that they're often colloquially referred to as brothers, despite the fact that they're not actually related to one another biologically. There are other Elders who haven't appeared in the MCU, at least not yet, but we do see one of them in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Yes, Ego, the living planet and father of Peter Quill, is one of the Elders of the Universe. Or he was, considering how the movie ended. Spoilers! The Elders of the Universe tend to do their own thing, and they don't have many interactions with one another. There's just one person who occasionally brings them all together, and that's none other than the Grandmaster himself. The Grandmaster loves nothing more than to play games, and we aren't talking about a rousing round of tiddlywinks. His games are high stakes, and he thinks nothing of playing with the lives of lesser creatures, such as humans. Just think of him like a terrifying celestial version of Jigsaw from the Saw franchise. But it might surprise you to know that Endwee Gast wasn't the first being to hold the title of Grandmaster. One of his fellow elders also loved playing games, and he also became known as the Grandmaster. Endwee was jealous of the title, so the two unimaginably old and powerful beings decided to settle things the old-fashioned way by playing games with one another. The original Grandmaster lost and, as punishment, was exiled from all existence. Hey, these guys play for some pretty high stakes. But eventually, after a few eons, he found his way back and challenged the Grandmaster to another game. Because of this, Endwee maintained the title of Grandmaster, while the original Grandmaster became known as the Challenger. Needless to say, this was a clash between two titans, and a ton of innocent people ended up being caught in the crossfire during this battle royale. 
It involved heroes like the Incredible Hulk and the Scarlet Witch, along with the insidious Black Order. After a long, complicated battle with many characters and no shortage of destruction, the Grandmaster was once more declared the winner. At least the Challenger got to keep his nickname, instead of being called the Defeated for all of eternity, which would have been a real bummer. By now, you're probably thinking that the Grandmaster is some sort of character who should be kept far, far away from any objects of power, like, say, the Infinity Stones. Unfortunately, for pretty much all of humanity, that hasn't been the case in the comic books. The Grandmaster may be incredibly powerful, but he still has his own fair share of worthy opponents. One of them is the planet-destroying behemoth, Galactus, who's constantly trying to feed on the universes the Grandmaster wants to play in. So in order to destroy another ultra-powerful being, the Grandmaster and the other elders got the Infinity Stones together, and their plan was so awful that it required an unexpected hero to deal with it. The elders wanted to gather all of the Infinity Stones, collapse the entire known universe, along with Galactus, and then re-emerge in a new universe with all new powers. However, Thanos came along hunting the Infinity Stones, and the Elders ended up losing custody of them. We're sure we don't need to tell either you comic book or Marvel movie fans what happened when Thanos gathered up all of the Infinity Stones. One sound. Yeah. In general, people don't really try to fight against the Grandmaster, they just try to survive whatever scheme he's currently working on. But when the Grandmaster tried to take possession of the Mind Stone, things got kind of weird. It appeared as though Thanos showed up to fight him for the stone, but it turned out it was just an illusion created by the Infinity Stones themselves. Pretty tricky and pretty much the only way to get the Mind Stone out of his clutches. Even entities as powerful as the Elders of the Universe find themselves attracted to the Infinity Stones. And we've seen this happen before in the MCU. During Guardians of the Galaxy, we learn that the Orb are heroes had been fighting over the whole movie actually contained the Power Stone. The Collector was eager to add this to his collection, and even showed the Guardians a helpful instructional video about the Infinity Stones. So, you want to learn about Infinity Stones? Although he ultimately didn't get to keep possession of it, we do know that he managed to get his hands on the Reality Stone, following the events of Thor The Dark World. On their own, the Infinity Stones are incredibly dangerous, a lesson we learned during Guardians of the Galaxy several times over. But together, they're exponentially more hazardous, and they tend to attract a lot of trouble and attention. The Infinity Stones have gone under many names during the history of the MCU, and we know that the Aether from Thor The Dark World was really the Reality Stone. Former ruler of Asgard, Odin, is another character who possessed at least one Infinity Stone in his lifetime, and potentially many more. For a period of time, the Space Stone was considered to be the jewel of his vault. Over the course of Thor The Dark World, we saw the awesome power of the Reality Stone, but it doesn't end up collecting dust in Odin's vault at the end of the movie. It's sent away to the Collector with the Asgardians, remarking that it's a bad idea to keep two Infinity Stones together. As soon as it's in his possession, the Collector says, one down, five to go. Although this was pretty ominous, it really wasn't that surprising. After all, the guy is called the Collector because he likes to collect things, so obviously he would want to have all the Infinity Stones to complete his set. But could there be another reason why the Collector was intent on obtaining the rest of the Infinity Stones? After all, in the comics, even the Elders of the Universe are revealed to not be above seeking the power of the Stones. We know that the Collector and the Grandmaster go way back. Well, way, 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 way back. And we know that the Grandmaster likes nothing better than a game of high stakes. Is it possible that the Grandmaster was interested to see whether the Collector, or Thanos, would be able to obtain all of the Infinity Stones first? Out of all of the Elders, it makes sense that the Collector would be the Grandmaster's choice for a champion. The Collector would just want to get the stones to add to his collection, and he's the least likely out of anyone to get distracted by some insidious scheme involving using the stones for evil. He's also powerful enough to obtain the stones, and he's smart and knowledgeable enough not to do anything dumb like grab them with his bare hands. But as Thanos learned eventually, getting hold of the stones is far from easy. Just learning where one was located was a task and a half for the Mad Titan. The reason we saw him going ham during Infinity War, and not in the previous movies, was that he was trying to suss out the locations of all the stones before he made a move himself. After all, things got ugly pretty quick once he started collecting them. Thanos knew that to have a chance of victory, he would have to plot out his course before he struck his first blow. Comic book fans know that in the books, not only does the Grandmaster have dealings with the Infinity Stones, but with the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy. In the comics, Thanos gets a hold of a cosmic cube at one point, and it's for the benefit of everyone in the universe that the Mad Titan gets stopped. The Elders of the Universe decide to give our heroes a hand by lending them a powerful weapon in the Vault of the Collector. Going into Avengers Endgame, our heroes are desperate for any help they could get. Even if the Grandmaster was gleefully watching to see if Thanos would collect all of the Infinity Stones before the Collector, we don't think he would actually want to see what Thanos does with them. It's possible that two Elders like the Grandmaster and the Collector would be able to offer considerable aid to our heroes. And it could also answer the question of what happens to Thanos after Endgame 
game is over. In the comics, the elders help out our heroes in exchange for getting to deal with Thanos once he's defeated. After all, the Grandmaster did lose his champion, the Incredible Hulk, following the events of Thor Ragnarok. Forget retiring peacefully on a farm, we like the idea of Thanos being forced to fight over and over again in the Grandmaster's arena. It would also be a fitting way to plausibly take Thanos out of the play in the MCU until he's needed to spread Reign of Terror across the universe again. We've spent so much time thinking about how our heroes are going to defeat Thanos that most of us haven't paused to consider where he'll end up once he's beaten. Do you think the Grandmaster will have a larger role in the MCU at some point? Is there something about end week gas that we may have missed? Share your predictions with us in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU content. Thanks for watching.